Good morning everybody and welcome to morning prayer this Tuesday, slightly overcast morning. You'll notice from the display in front of you some Lego bricks, which may seem a little bit strange where prayer is concerned. But later on we'll be looking at a reading from Luke's Gospel that talks about what it means to build our house on firm foundations and I can't help but when I think of that story to think of the the song and the actions of the rain come down and the washed away the sand and the joy actually that when open the book deliver that story that it brings to the children but more importantly I notice that with Lego if you have a nice solid green base your building stands much stronger so I want us to consider that this morning as we go through morning prayer. Our firm foundation is in Christ alone. Let's take a moment and ready ourselves ready for prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our Easter anthems this morning. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We say together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. If you can hear some background noise, I'm smiling because as we pray about the glory and rejoice in the gift of this new day, I can hear the park being mowed by the local council, a sign that things are changing in our world. So apologies if you can hear that noise, but let's take it for what it is, the beauty of God's creation being cared for. There are actually four Psalms set for today, but they are all short ones. So I'm gonna begin with Psalm 124. If the Lord himself had not been on our side, now may Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger burnt against us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over our soul. Over our soul would have swept the raging waters. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are delivered. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 125 
Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem, so the Lord stands round about his people from this time forth for evermore. The sceptre of wickedness shall not hold sway over the lands allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart, those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord shall take away the evildoers, but let their peace be upon Israel. Psalm 126 When the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue, our tongue with songs of joy. Then said they among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us, and therefore we rejoiced. Restore us again our fortunes, O Lord, as the river beds of the desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing the sheaves with them. And finally, Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the God keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you hasten to rise up early and go so late to rest, eating the bread of toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they dispute their enemies in the gate. We say together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Luke, beginning chapter 6, verse 39. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbour's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbour, Friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbour's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house, who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. Our Gospel Canticle this morning is the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, 
born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. We come now to a time of our intercessions and our prayers. Now, last night, I was blessed enough to be a part of a half night of prayer with my college. And we do these every half term. And we spend around about six hours together in prayer, in worship, praying for the college, for each other, for our nation. And last night, for the first time, we did it via Zoom. And where it may not have been the same, there was no doubt the spirit of the Lord had anointed the evening. And we were blessed. We got to pray the Book of Common Prayer. We used images. We used music. We used contemporary worship. And we used contemplative prayer. All reminding us of our personal relationship and personal approach to prayer and to the Lord. So this morning I'm going to use some formal prayers. But I will offer you a space to pray for the things that are on your heart. Either in the silence of your own space or please feel free to put them in the comments box. But when we consider foundations and we consider a firm foundation in our hope in Christ, that has to come through prayer. So, let us pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his love. Father, grant that the church, entrusted with the words of truth, shall be obedient to her charge and make them known with zeal and faithfulness. Grant that all Christian people may live their lives fully in the world, serving its people but not conform to its ways when they are contrary to their calling as citizens of heaven. I give you this opportunity to consider yourself as a citizen of heaven and what that means to live for the Lord. So please take a moment and pray for yourselves and your Christian community. Bless the world in which and for which Christ died and rose again. Give to those in authority the wisdom to know that the world where they have power is not the whole reality and the grace to use their power for the benefit of those they govern. I ask now that we bring before the Lord all of those in authority who are policy makers at this difficult time. We pray for Boris Johnson, for Matt Hancock and for the rest of the government responsible for making policies to protect our nation, especially the most vulnerable. We pray for our local head teachers and governing bodies. We 
we pray for the American government. We bring before you Justin Madders and Michael Edwardson. And I'll say again, give to those in authority the wisdom to know that the world where they have power is not the whole, re whole reality. Give them the grace to use their power for the benefit of those they govern. Protect from evil our families, friends and neighbours and let them be sanctified as Christ sanctified himself for those he called his friends. May all in our community be guided by the words of truth. In this moment, I want us to consider our family, friends and neighbours, those we know who are hurting through ill health, be that physical or spiritual or mental, we pray for our neighbours who are struggling with isolation. We pray for the members of our family who we've not seen for months other than through a computer screen. And I'll say again, protect from all evil our families, friends and neighbours and let them be sanctified as Christ sanctified himself for those he calls his friends. We pray for those whose faith makes them hated and persecuted. Bless and strengthen all who have received the words of Christ and sacrifice safety and comfort in their service. At this moment, I'd like us to consider other countries around the world and those charitable organisations that work there in places of persecution and hate. And I'd like to pray for Pakistan and Bangladesh. for Uganda for the work of the Red Cross Compassion CSM And I'll say again, bless and strengthen all who have received the words of Christ and sacrifice safety and comfort in their service. We pray for all who heard the gospel and lived and died in its faith. May their joy be complete in the presence of the Lord who has prepared the way for them. In this moment, we are met with a growing list of people that we know, family, friends, neighbours, colleagues who have succumbed to COVID-19 or to other awful illnesses. I'd like you now to consider the prayers for those we know who have passed recently. I pray for Tony, a fellow student at St Melitis, or his family after Tony passed away just a few weeks ago. 
and I pray for our chaplain Lisa who lost her mum earlier this month. May their joy be complete in the presence of the Lord who has prepared the way for them. And may our prayers be accepted through Christ, whose name is our protection. Our collect for the day. Almighty God, who raised up Dunstan to be a true shepherd of the flock, a restorer of monastic life, and a faithful counsellor to those in authority. Give to all pastors the same gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may be true servants of Christ and all his people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining us this morning for morning prayer. I hope that you will be able to gather with us again this evening at 7pm for evening prayer. Until then, I pray you stay well and you stay safe. God bless.